Hello, Brooklyn. I'm Nicholas Durst, and I'll be your host for the 2015 season of Cyclones TV. Last Tuesday, the team reported to the ballpark to kick off the season, and on Thursday, they had an open practice. There were plenty of fans here to cheer them on. Friday, they started the season in Staten Island, and Saturday was the home opener. Now let's take a look at what happened. Friday, June 19th was the season opener against Staten Island. It may have taken extra innings, but the Cyclones were able to come away with a 3-2 win in 12. Tucker Tharp drove in the Cyclones' first run of the season in the fourth, scoring Pedro Perez in a double to right center field. In the fifth inning, Michael Katz scored in a wild pitch. In the twelfth inning, Michael Bornal drove in Emmanuel Zavala for what proved to be the game-winning run. Gaithier Bumgarner tossed a 1-2-3 bottom of the twelfth to pick up the win. The Cyclones are now 12 and 3rd opening day, including a 10-2 record versus Staten Island Yankees. Saturday, June 20th was the season opener at MCU Park. All the Cyclones fell 8-3 to the Staten Island Yankees. They played in front of a capacity crowd of 7,795. That was the 301st sellout in franchise history. Sunday, June 21st, the Cyclones took on the Staten Island Yankees once again, this time coming out a 6-4 victory. Michael Bernal had the first RBI of the game, and Jeff Deal homered. He and Zach Matthew each had two RBIs, and winning pitcher Michael Gibbons went five and two-thirds innings. Alex Palsha came out for the five-out save to close out the game. On Monday, June 22nd, the Cyclones took on the Tri-City Valley Cats and won by two touchdowns, 14 to nothing. Everyone contributed to the victory, but Tucker Tharp had a historic day, going 4-4 four four to walk and scoring a franchise record five times. Matt Blackman allowed three hits and struck out seven in seven innings during the victory. Earlier today, I caught up with Cyclones manager Tom Gamboa to see what he had to say about the upcoming season. Let's take a look. Well, as far as uh, <clears throat> building our team this year, we've got nine returning players coming back, and I think their experience and leadership over some of the, the younger guys that have come from extended spring training that have not played night baseball and, and in front of uh, rabid fans like we have here in Brooklyn, I'm counting on their leadership to guide the young guys along. And certainly um, Mike Katz had a, had a big season for us last year until unfortunately suffering a season leg, uh, season ending leg injury. But, uh, you know, we're looking for him, him and Michael Bernal hitting in the middle of the lineup to be two key guys. That's for sure. Well, the goals for this season would be, I think like any other for a, a manager at the minor league level, it's always about development. Number one. I mean, you're, you know, we're a feeder system, uh, along with Savannah, St. Lucie, Binghamton, and Vegas for our big league club. So the number one job is development. Number two is to win. I think we have a fairly balanced team this year, pitching, defense, and offensive-wise. If we have a weakness going into the season, I would have to say that uh, the fact that we've only got uh, one left-handed hitter in the lineup makes us um, – you know, somewhat vulnerable. We're not we're not able to platoon as much or ma mix and match like we did last year. But we're looking forward to the season, and I think we're going to have a very competitive team. I know the guys are going to play their hearts out in front of these diehard Brooklyn fans. Now let's take a look around the Mets organization. The Savannah Sandads clinched the first half title for the fifth time in six years with an eight to five victory over the Augusta Green Jackets on Sunday. The Nats record is thirty nine and thirty one for the season. The St. Lucie Mets sit at 35 and 34. Jeff McNeil leads the league with a 328 batting average. The Florida State League All-Star Game was held at Tradition Field on Saturday, and the South team shut out the North 6-0. McNeil was the only South player with a multi-hit game, going two for five. The Binghamton Mets are currently 36 and 32. Former Cyclone Michael Conforto is tearing it up, batting 378 with two home runs and 12 RBIs in 20 games. Brandon Nimmo is batting 314 with 11 RBIs and two home runs. The Las Vegas 51s sit at 40-31 and 31 in first place in the Pacific Coast League Southern Division. Kirk Newnice had two three-run home runs on June 20th to help the 51s beat the Fresno Grizzlies 11-5. Steven Matz is currently 7-4 with a 2-11 ERI and 86 strikeouts on the year. The New York Mets are currently 36-35 and 35 in a game and a half back of first place in the NL East. Wilmer Flores leads the team with 10 home runs and 32 RBIs. We look forward to seeing you at the ballpark this season. There are some great promotions to check out, such as Saved by the Bell Night on June 24th, the 15th season celebration on June 25th, the second Seinfeld Night on July 5th, and Star Wars Night on July 11th, and of course, the return of Jersey Thursdays and post-game fireworks. We look forward to seeing you there. Now let's take a look at this week's upcoming schedule. Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, the team will be taking on the Tri-City Valley Cats, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, the Connecticut Tigers. The 26th is Boy Scouts Night, and the 27th is Girl Scouts Night at the ballpark. Hopefully you get the chance to check out one of these games. 
stay connected with the team by liking us on Facebook, following us on Twitter, liking us on Instagram, and adding us on Snapchat at BK Cyclones. Good night, Brooklyn. See you next time.